just uh, to give a little bit more background than, than Emily did uh, for Northvolt uh, being already uh, for some time in, in the markets, uh, some background on, on uh, Caliber and the project. Um, um, a project has been uh, running and, and uh, uh, under examination for quite a long time, but as, as a, the um, real demand for, for increased uh, lithium production has not been existing, then, then uh, uh, the prices have not been uh, high enough and the demand has not been high enough in order to, to ramp up this uh, project. So, so um, um, uh, even though the uh, targets, the end users exist, so, so uh, traffic uh, uh, electrification, cutting down CO2 emissions, new energy sources and the uh, uh, reserves and the batteries for, for them, as well as uh, combined with the, uh, with the um, uh, intelligent uh, devices and, and also uh, electronic uh, tools, uh, they have been growing, the market has been growing and, and therefore the uh, battery industry, industry as well has been growing throughout the years. So uh, finally, this um, uh, has led to a situation that uh, the demand for for lithium also, as well as the other battery metals and minerals has increased uh, very rapidly throughout the past years. Um, uh, as an example, uh, lithium hydroxide, our end uh, product, uh, the price was um, uh, four years ago, so 2018, the price was below $8,000 per ton, and now it's below $80,000 per ton. So the price has 10 times uh, uh, grown 10 times higher than it was uh, a few years ago. Next play, page, please. So what happened to Caliber project, as you see, see above there, um, the ore was found already 60 years ago, and the studies continued very long until the demand was high enough. And at the same time, there was a major change in the ownership, um, a, a gigantic uh, um, um, uh, uh, mining operator, Sibani Stillwater, uh, decided to invest on, on green minerals. So, so they um, uh, made an investment, uh, first a small investment to Caliber and uh, increasing that through the past 18 months, uh, so to say. And uh, now they are owning the majority of, of uh, Caliber. Uh, Caliber has a uh, proved to be the uh, probably the largest lithium uh, deposit in the European area. And as um, uh, integrated a critical mineral by European Commission, lithium uh, uh, demand in the European area is, is also growing. Like um, Mr. Vesa was saying in, in the previous presentation, uh, China has been a um, um, uh, foregoer in, in these um, uh, uh, battery markets and, and battery minerals as well. And at the moment, uh, much of the uh, lithium hydroxide, carbonate and phosphate are still uh, produced in China or uh, under China ownership. And the and, uh, European Commission has uh, indicated uh, lithium resources as uh, critical ones and added to the growth of uh, lithium need in the European area which is regarded as uh, 15 times higher in the next uh, uh, 10 years. Um, and at the same time, uh, European Commission uh, uh, declaring that, that uh, almost half of the lithium should be produced in the European area. That practically means that, that the lithium hydroxide production has to be uh, 700 times more than it is uh, right now in, in the European area. So a very interesting case uh, as well in, in uh, the hands um, that we have in, in, in this um, uh, mining and chemical industry production, battery uh, chain production. Uh, if we take the next slide, uh, the um, unique uh, uh, nature that we have in our, our product is that, that, first of all, we are very close uh, to the core market. Uh, we are aiming to the European market and, and at the moment most of the lithium is produced either in Australia or South America. And as we know, they are much uh, farther away from Central Europe than, than the Gulf of Bosnia is uh, and, uh, and uh, where we are located. On the right side uh, corner, you can see the uh, 
um, nature of our, our operation. So we are practically talking about an integrate. We are building five uh, mines in an area of uh, an um, old uh, peat production area, which is about to be closed in, in a very uh, uh, few years um, due to uh, running out of, uh, out of the peat. So we are not touching any, any um, uh, green uh, nature there, but, but uh, an area which is uh, already been on industrial production. Very close to these uh, mines, um, practically within one to five kilometers, uh, we will have our concentrator plant, the first plant that we are building in the area to uh, take the uh, lithium concentrate from the area and furthermore uh, to, to refine it uh, in our chemical plant, which is uh, to be located in in the Kokkola Industrial Park uh, at the coastline. So um, uh, two days uh, shipping from, from European uh, market and the um, size of the production will be some 15,000 tons of lithium hydroxide per year, which is practically uh, the nowadays demand for lithium hydroxide in the European market. Uh, furthermore, about the uh, opportunities that we have in the area, as I said that, that we are probably looking at the uh, uh, biggest uh, European deposit of, of lithium ore. Uh, it expands um, uh, uh, some 100 kilometers um, south and southeast east from the area. And now we are only looking at a very small uh, part of the um, total area. So, so therefore, we again are in, in a very uh, long-lasting, uh, long-term uh, operation in the area. At the moment, the exploration has found out that that we should be having uh, mine uh, for operation for more than 16 years. Next slide, please uh, go into the um, needs of uh, employees. Here you see the growth of the company. We can move on to the uh, following slide. So practically we are going to, to um, um, employ uh, some 250, 300 employees uh, for us and uh, the uh, permanent uh, supporting services that we will have on these uh, mines and on these uh, sites and how we are going to manage this uh, recruitment is uh, what, what I have uh, written down here is, is uh, like Emily was saying, uh, very core, very, very essential is a close cooperation and understanding with the uh, local and regional schools, uh, universities, polytechnics and, and voc vocational schools and that has already taken place our benefit is that that the um, Kokkola area has a very long background on on chemical production, but also in metals production. So the the um, uh, industry, the kind of industry we are talking here, is very familiar to to the area, and the uh, both uh, for the people, uh, the youngsters in the area, and also for the institutes uh, um, in the area. So so we are not bringing anything new. And um, something that has been bothering me throughout the uh, years is that that um, that um, when talking about battery industry, many times we are separating battery industry uh, in a way that that we are talking about something something unique uh, when building batteries or building industry related to batteries. But but practically, uh, as uh, Emily seemed to be agreeing uh, uh, on on this, that that uh, wh what we need the most is the uh, people in the normal industrial operation and normal industrial supportive functions. And now we're talking about uh, uh, chemical and process uh, operators, uh, uh, maintenance uh, uh, technicians, uh, electricity automation technicians, uh, chemis uh, chemists uh, uh, added naturally when we go to, to mining uh, with uh, geologists. And, and we are talking about a, a platform or of uh, normal industrial uh, uh, vacancies and, and workplaces. Nothing uh, really special to, to batteries. We, we will need very few of uh, those specialists, uh, even if the, um, if the uh, amounts uh, would grow. And that, of course, makes it easier to, uh, to the um, institutes and, and universities to, to integrate to those needs that, that we have in place. Uh, what is still needed, uh, of course, uh, is a continuous uh, skills development uh, in the future. That is going to be a challenge uh, uh, because um, the um, 
uh, competition on both sides of uh, Gulf of Bothnia is, is uh, extremely high on workforce right now, and it's going to be even increasing in the, in the future years. Um, a, a huge opportunity what I see here is, uh, is the um, uh, possibility for, for um, bringing employees and workplaces together in order to, to have some kind of uh, career development and uh, personal development involved in their uh, working in, in different uh, uh, companies in the area. What already takes place in, in uh, Kokkola Industrial Park, uh, which is quite natural because the, the area is a uh, is, uh, few square kilometers uh, on the size, but that uh, could be enlarged to, to the other um, actors in, in, um, uh, in the coastline of, of the Gulf of Bothnia. So, in a nutshell, that's my ideas, a short introduction on, on, uh, on um, uh, Keliber, the reasons why we exist and, and what our challenges or, or opportunities are right now regarding uh, workforce and, and employment.
tomorrow's society. Uh, you don't need to be big to take part in the driving of the future. Uh, often it can be quite easier to be small and quick to adopt changes than to be big. So you have an opportunity to use remote areas and rural areas for driving transition in, in quite many, many things, actually. What I'm trying to, uh, what I'm going to talk about is, is how we see our success factors for building the society, the green society, and perhaps how we can uh, contribute as a small part of municipality in this transition and talk a little bit about different areas, what we are working with already and have been working with for some, some time and also what we see for need for competences and education and perhaps from a little bit different angle from more uh, uh, how, what competences do we need to build the new society, not the competences needed to the tech, for, for technical doing this stuff, but for building the, the, the society that we want to build to attract new labors. If we see our assets for being a, a part in building the new, new green society, we have, we have a lot of energy and forest. We are also very good infrastructure with, with uh, a logistic node for, the, for Norland. But we also have a mountain ski resort and the nature reserve with the biggest in Europe. So in the middle of this area, Sweden, Norway, Finland, we have a, a very, very fine nature that is, is somehow quite spectacular when you see it in a European perspective. So if we start with energy for it and logistics, so we as I told, we have a lot of, of uh, uh, water power. The municipality of Storuman is the third municipality in Sweden when it comes to production of water power. We have also a lot of wind power and many, many wind power projects which are planned for, to, to contribute to more power to the system, which is needed in this transformation. What we have been looking for during quite a long time is to how can we be able to refine electricity and also raw forest raw material locally. So we not only be an exporter of raw material, but we can refine it locally and create labor and attract investment to the rural areas. Uh, we have also a very uh, big logistic hub. Storuman is one of three logistics hubs in the north of, of Sweden. We have Östersund, we have Storuman, and we have Gällivare. Uh, and this is a crossroad with uh, two European roads and a crossroad with two, two uh, railways. Uh, and today it's transporting a lot of, of wood <laughs> raw materials. What we have been looking is how can we, with these assets, how can we strengthen our part in the transformation uh, and create something new and, and perhaps take lead in some areas. So we started to, to uh, a sustainable project to look how we can combine hydropower with heavy transports. We have a lot of, of as I mentioned, projects that are planning new wind power mills and, and we have this uh, this logistic hub, how can we combine that and, and, uh, and make uh, hydrogen? And how can the hydrogen then uh, make the transportation system green? So we started this a couple of years ago and uh, have been formating a test region of hydrogen, uh, starting with the green forest value chain from how to, for, from the uh, to when you cut down the tree and to transport it from the from the forest to to the terminal and then by train to the factories down the coast uh, and we have 
taking the first step already. So we are building a hydrogen gas station. This is under construction and will be finished in 2023. And it's one of two hydrogen sta gas station in region Västerbotten. One in Storuman and one is in Umeå. And this is one step of electrifying the, the uh, e Torvan uh, with hydrogen and heavy transports. So during th 2023, it will be in place, hydrogen station in Storuman and Umeå. And we have also been part of the Nordic battery belt logistics because this is a crucial logistic, I would say, narrow when it comes to, to transportation within the battery belt. So what we're trying to do in next step is to, to electrify the whole air Torvan and then to electrify also the Inlands Banan, who is the railway, uh, railway um, in the in, inner, of the, inner of Sweden. Uh, as a small community, we can't do this as ourselves, or, or this is, isn't perhaps a, a community issue. But, but for the community, it's essential that the logistics is working. Uh, so we have uh, taken uh, call all, all our friends uh, to, to see how can you help us with this. So we have been uh, one of the initiatives of of creating a um, consortium of HEAL with, with um, a cooperation from the Uni, Umeå Universitet, Process IT Innovation, who is uh, Luleå Tekniska Högskola, Umeå Universitet, and, and uh, the, uh, some other uh, rural municipalities also. Uh, so we started from the bottom to create cooperation for the needs, for the community needs, uh, for the municipality needs, and then we, we try to get all the help that we need to, to get the transportation structure working. And also, of course, uh, this is driven by the uh, industry. We have the whole forest industry with SCA and Holman and Sveaskog, and we have uh, all the industry uh, who is building machines, who is uh, helping the forest industry to for the green value chain of the forest, Viscania, Komatsu, and so on. And we have also the railway, uh, railway companies, and we have the energy companies. So we're working together with very company driven, but we try to put these things together on a municipality level. Uh, that's when it comes to, to uh, uh, energy and forest. Some other things that we are in our municipality, we need this transportation because it's a very long distance. Uh, and as Aurora mentioned, we are in the middle of the new labor market reg region where we see that we have very, very big assets in our mountains, ski resorts, nature reserve. Uh, so how can we use these assets to attract neighbors from all around the world? Uh, we think that we need very, very good transportation. So, so this is exable. Uh, you can reach this on the easy way from Murana, from Skellefteå, from Umeå, from Vasa. Uh, we have also two assets in our municipality. That's two airports. Uh, one in Hemavan is operational. And we have been a part of the FAIR project, who is um, aiming to link east-west on uh, uh, electrical fly with electrical flight. And I think if we can get this working, then you have a uh, uh, quite good uh, good asset in the Swedish, uh, in the mountains in Tärnaby uh, As I mentioned, my first picture was actually my backyard. Uh, I've been moving back to Storuman and been working in Stockholm late uh, two weeks ago, I was living in Sundsvall, partly working in Storuman, but I'm now moved back to Storuman and I'm living in the mountains, but I'm working partly in Stockholm and partly, partly uh, in Europe and partly in the municipality. And, and be able to be, uh, to be able to uh, build a flexible uh, labor 
market, I think that's quite crucial to attract the people up in our region. So we are have been focusing quite hard in 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 the air in in fly, in how to create the new new um, uh, flying. So we have also been in uh, with Luftfartsverket, the aviation authority in in Sweden to see how how do we need to change the, the legislation to be able to use the airspace in different kind of ways. So we've been working quite a lot with electric drones in community service and see how can we use the new technology to, to uh, have good service in our municipality. But all, all, always on, uh, it's a service for, uh, for the municipality that are giving that are driving the technical development. Uh, if we are going to have these, these um, um, flying system working, we need very cheap airports because you need many more airports. So we've also been working with Saab for, for remote airports uh, uh, and have a, a couple of projects with that. So, so essentially we, we are working with technology and trying to see if we can have this uh, technology leaps and take advantage of them to build the society. Uh, and when it comes to competence and education, uh, what has been on our mind is, is not only the, the competence of technical issues and, and how to build things is a comp uh, competence for building the community. Uh, when it comes to Norrland, and especially in, in Norrlands inland, uh, we haven't built the community since the 60s. We have always uh, been with, make it in smaller and smaller and smaller. So we don't have the co competence for building the community and how with new technology, how should, how could the new community look like? So, so what we are talking quite a lot about is we need to, to uh, uh, have um, competence and education for politicians, for, for um, uh, different kind of people who, who you perhaps don't think need competences when it comes to electrical, uh, this new, uh, techniques and these new transitions. Uh, so that's that's a short overview of what we are doing in in uh, Storuman, municipality of Storuman, in a quite swinglish uh, way. <laughs> no, but uh, sound on? Yes, okay, thank you. Uh, <laughs> but but it's not uh, any problem with the swinglish because here we are, we are uh, working with the swinglish, Finnish and like a total mix with our three languages. Uh, however, thank you, Jonas. Uh, big hands to you. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, unfortunately, we have to move on to the program, but I, I, it was really important to lift up uh, that you are working in this uh, development area and how creative you are and all the possibilities that you're into and achieving as well with your way of thinking. Uh, so. If you want to get in contact with Jonas, we have his contacts uh, as well. So you can get in, in uh, chat directly with him. Uh, so do you I just want to see I any questions before we move on. No, that was crystal clear, uh, actually. It's really interesting because you're in this collaboration thing. Thank you, Jonas. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, and the next, uh, f um, the next uh <laughs> part we are going into, also connected uh, to the battery value chain, is the relocate project. So I'm welcoming up Michaela and Simon, project leaders of the relocate project. And this is really interesting because this is cooperation at all levels during the same time. So please, stage is your and you can describe more what you've been doing and what you're into with the project. So thank you.
Thank you. Changing some papers, <laughs> not to be mixed up. So my name is uh, Michaela Bundeson, and this is Simon. And now Simon. And we are working for Region Vesterbotten, uh, and we're here to talk about relocate, uh, a method de development project uh, run in collaboration with um, the Swedish Public Employment Service, the Skellefteå Municipality, and Northvolt. Uh, and it's co-funded by the European Social Fund, and it's been created to make it easier for those who want to move to Skellefteå to work and live. You can take the next picture. So the current state when we started this project two years ago, uh, no news to you now, it's uh, over 10,000 new jobs generated um, as a result of Northvolt's establishment. Uh, both in the industry, but also in other branches and sectors. And we have an already low unemployment rate here. I think it was 6.2 when we started, and it's down to 3.6 now, so it's decreasing. Uh, and the matchable existing workforce uh, in occupation that require upper secondary school uh, is too small relative to the needs in the municipality. So we have people moving here, but not to the extent that we need, and not enough people to meet the needs. Uh, and there is also no sector-wide collaboration model or method um, at a national level that supports labor market mobility. Uh, it has not been needed in the extent that we need uh, today. Uh, so we need to strengthen the capacity to attract labor to Skellefteå and Västerbotten from other regions in Sweden, uh, and we need to do it together. The target group for this project are those who are unemployed and live further away than commuting distance, and we are focusing on larger cities like Stockholm and Malmö. Uh, We're not limited to those um, cities, but we are investing most in these because they have the largest number of unemployed people. Can uh, move on. Uh, so I said it was a method development project, and in order to succeed in the supply of competence, we need to be brave and we need to try new ways of working. Um, and Relocate is, Relocate is uh, one of those initiati initiatives. It's a method development project, and the method or model is developing and changing throughout the project. The goal for us is that the methods we develop and test uh, can be used by more. Later on, we hope that we can broaden and uh, uh, direct it to other target groups, both unemployed uh, and people in employment. Uh, another just as important goal, and I think it was Emily from Northvolt who talked about it as well, is to test the system, the structures, the processes, uh, to be able to identify uh, the barriers for labor market mobility that we are facing today. But to, uh, to try and summarize the model we are working on today, we try a lot of different methods in three categories. Attract, identify, and include. And the changes um, for the Swedish Public Employment Service in recent years, their reformation, no longer means the same contact with the target group in this project, the unemployed people. So within the project, we have been working and spending a lot of time finding other partners uh, to get in touch with the target group. Uh, so therefore, labor market units at the targeted municipalities in Stockholm and Malmö, for example, are important partners for us in reaching the target group. The private uh, providers linked to the Swedish Public Employment Service um, 
are also uh, an important partner, and we also work with different organizations, such, such as the International uh, Women's Association in Malmö. And through these collaborations with municipalities and organizations, um, the opportunity to inform and attract uh, people increases. Regarding identify, um, we want to find people with unused skills. We believe that there are people with skills that are not being used today. Um, uh, who wants to work and who could work, but for various reasons haven't gotten the chance. Uh, to address that, we are uh, developing a method for recruiting in a new, innovative way. And it's an inclusive method that instead of focusing on what is written in a person's CV, focuses on general skills and motivation. And general skills or soft skills is not about what the person is like, but how they can apply their skills in a specific work situation. We also have more traditional recruitment processes, and the overall goal is to match people's skills with the need uh, of employers here in Colectio. The include category, that is our participant program, the relocate program. And my colleague, Simon, is going to tell you a little bit more about that. So we can change to the next one. Uh, because an important aspect has been to package an offer uh, for the job seeker uh, to be able to, to make the deci decision if they were going to move to Schleftio. Uh, so this is the relocate program. Uh, I'm going to be focusing on the first two, uh, the, the Insight Schleftio and the guiding. Uh, so the Insight Schleftio, it's a web course uh, being develop developed for this project. So you can you have a, a job seeker in Stockholm or Malmö or somewhere in Sweden to take this online course in their phone, tablet or, or computer uh, and get insight on about how the opportunities in Schleftio, how it is to live here, and everything, so we, they are prepared or it's easier for them to make the decision if they're gonna move here or not. Uh, and with this web course, of course, a lot of questions for the job seeker, and not only the job seeker, it's also included for the family or partner uh, that's also gonna move maybe. Uh, so they get in contact with the guides within the project, so they can ask questions about the education the moving part and of course the housing that's been mentioned before uh, and these two together is really important for making this happen for the candidates and job seekers to be able to move uh, and make these trans transitions uh, but not only it is about the work uh, as mentioned before it's also about the spare time and uh, work-life balance and so on uh, so, so it's all together uh, for, for making this happen we heard before lunch from uh, Lux and the Tore about the education. Uh, we've been focusing on this uh, automation operator education uh, in this project because the numbers are so, so big uh, of, of the competence in that area. Uh, and as I told, it's not only about the, the work. We also have guides that helps with the activities uh, for the job seeker or the family or the kids moving up so they can uh, get, get in touch with the their interest and start start that. So if we look at the next one, what we learned so far, uh, lessons so far in the project, we've seen some barriers, of course, uh, for, for making this happen. If I mention a few of them, uh, we have this reform for the Swedish Public em Employment Service, that's Mikaela was talking about, uh, which means that we need to partner up with a lot more uh, private providers than just working with the employment service. And it's not about uh, a sprint or a small uh, group that we need here, as you know. So it's a long-term relationships with, with these providers. Uh, and finding the new ways for, for working together with, with this, within this area. But also in, in uh, the incentives for, for the providers to work with us. Uh, what are the gains for them to, to help us with this, uh, to get the mobility on the lab labor market. Uh, but also, there's a new industry, as Northwolf and Emily told. A lot of people need the education, and it's not as easy as it should be. 
moving for, for the education first before starting work at, at the company as, as an authorate. Uh, and also, uh, I think a lot of people have, have heard about the finance, of course, for, for the candidates to be able to move. Uh, that they, they don't today, when they move within Sweden, get the financial support. But if you move, for example, from Vasa or Copenhagen, you can have finan financial support. And we find that a bit strange. Then we would need a more mobility on the labor market. So that's a few of, of the lessons so far. Hmm. We finished? Or yes. Yeah, we, yeah. we finished. Yeah. We finished. Questions? Any questions? Kusimus? Yes, one question, Kusimus. University, you have a similar issue with people coming from Spe abroad. You have to speak in the microphone. Yeah, I did. Uh, yeah, but you have to put it close to okay. your mouth. Um, there, there you yeah, go. Right. Yeah. Uh, at university, you have a similar problem with people. Problem with people coming from outside of Sweden, coming here, and the main challenge is, well, there is the residence permanent search, but the main challenge next to housing is finding a job for the partner. Have you? Is there any way of you address that? We do. Uh, the, the, the package that we offer, the guiding, uh, we, we reach out to the, the partner as well. Uh, and if the partner is also unemployed, they can be a participant. But if not, we still try to help them. But there is challenges for us to be able to match. Uh, we're working close with Northvolt and Chelefio municipality. And if, if it are jobs in those areas, no problem. But if they have other competences, we, we need to, we, ha we have challenges. We need to uh, uh, bring on more employers to the project. Okay. okay. That's great. Yes. Question, Corin. Uh, well, the housing <laughs> part. Uh, if, you, if, if your participants don't find any housing in Shelefte or nearby, what do you do? Do you collaborate with other other cities or something? <laughs> For example, Kiste. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we are trying everything to to make it happen, and we have two guides uh, that are scanning the market in all of Schleswig municipality, but also looking to find uh, collaborations outside of it. But uh, and it's very common to first move to, to something temporarily, uh, and while they're here, maybe studying, then it's easier to, to look for housing when they're here and can see the areas and, and so on. But absolutely, we could, could work together. Mm. Well, thank you. This is a really interesting pioneer project. I will have to work along the battery value chain, but towards other industries and sectors as well. Big hands for you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, all right, Mirja ja Lena, Mirja Hetala ja Lena Stormalekto och OSAO uh, arbeta tillsammans is now up to the uh, and it you okay not both of you <laughs> it won't be both of you uh, okay one is having the photo <laughs> control here oh. However, this is also an Interreg Nord project with partners from North Finland and North Sweden. And it's also about how to make a common labor marketing area and increase the awareness of opportunity for labor mobility across borders. So this project, uh, I will remember, is ending the next week. So we are very curious to know and get some more insights what has been done in the project. So now we're just working with the headset <laughs> issue. <laughs> now we're on to it. A difficult head. <laughs> so, yes. Lava on Sinun. Okay, kiitos. Jo, Hei, jag är Mirja från Osao och jag jobbar som sakkunnig i det här projektet, arbeta tillsammans. Och nu ska jag byta till engelska. <laughs> ja, 
we have here also Lena Termelehte, who is the project manager actually in this project, and she is in re response of answering the questions today. We have shared this. And uh, as we have heard earlier today many times, cooperate in matters. Uh, it is uh, concrete actions, but also an attitude. And attitude is what, what counts. During this project, uh, past two and a half years, we have been cooperating a lot together with our partners and also with our target groups. And in this project, OSAO, which is uh, the second largest educational uh, uh, vocational provider in Finland, uh, is a leader partner of this project. And uh, we work together with uh, Oulu University of Applied Sciences, situated in Ulepori, and uh, vocational college in, Lap uh, in Tornio, which is called Lappia. And then we have North Kalot Council working with us, and also Luleå University of Technology, and Utpili Nurti Över Tornio. And we all have had our own responses, but we have walked, worked together and supported each other with these working packages. The target group would uh, have been in our project, those have been uh, our own pro uh, organization staff and students and also um, employees, also employees, especially those ones who want to experience something new and are keen to and interested in working abroad, Finland or Sweden. So as you can see, this project has been also a project where both Finland and Sweden are within, as well as Interreg Partner region. And <coughs> uh, our target groups, uh, beside of students and staff of our own organizations, uh, all are also different kind of organizations levels like uh, like um, business life both side of the border and then border counseling uh, employees services like um, arpet fur medicine and uh, TA services and also these business organizations like business tornio and business Oulu and companies like LKAP and Northvolt and other EU projects projects like Interreg Battery Region. The target and goal of this project has been to promote a common labor market area between Finland and North Finland and North Sweden in this border area. And how? We have uh, tried to increase the awareness of the possibilities to move, study, work or do business in both sides of the world and promote also knowledge of our own staff, mobility and try to provide positive impact, impact to their staff attitudes so that they can influence students positive ways. And we also has mm, enhanced attitudes against the neighbor languages like Swedish and Finnish. And also try to increase all kinds of awareness and knowledge about work life, culture, language, administrative regulations with a positive attitude to diminish the mental border obstacles and help people to move across the border and help comp companies to get workforce. As you know, if there is uh, awareness, it uh, diminishes also obstacles obstacles. In uh, September last year, it was published Mental Border Obstacle Report by our project. Uh, the report is written in Swedish and Finnish, and it can be read in our own web page. There is a short English summary also. And uh, 
this is um, commissioned by our project, but compiled by Öresund Institute, which has made earlier uh, border report also between between Norway and Denmark and Norway and Sweden. And this was this time for Finnish and Swedish uh, point of view. Uh, it summarized interviews and also also questionnaires with both from, from Finnish and Swedish sides. Another publish uh, publication we have made is a short comparative study of differences in vocational quali qualification between Finland and Sweden. In, in some kind, some fields of the uh, vocational fields, there are there needs to be some specific uh, test and uh, regulations that must be founded when you w go to work abroad, or even if you across the Tornioyoki River. And that was in main response Utbildung Nord. And the ways how we have tried to increase the awareness of all these earlier mentioned issues is has been um, several of infos, seminars and trips. We have been we have we are have we had several of infos in our own organizations, then we made cooperation with Eures, Arbetsfur Medling, uh, and Nordjob, and also with companies like I mentioned earlier, LKAP and Nordvolt, but also these business, business um, Tornio and Oulu, and with you, you project, other you projects. And seminars, we have had two larger seminars. Last September, we had with Pokrens Lösa Krensen seminar in Havaranda uh, and Tornio when we published this um, report. And uh, two weeks ago, we had final seminar of our own project in Havaranda and Tornio, both sides of the border. The trips we have organized has been um, quite uh, massive, I would say. We have organized trips for students, staff and our stakeholders. And we see it here in nor uh, northern Sweden mainly. And then we have had language courses both in Swedish and Finnish and uh, short event fikas to our own staff, mainly. Uh, LTU has been in response of organizing, organizing mock courses, which are open to all for free. And the one was exploring sustainable, sustainable production systems, and the other one was career planning essentials, unlock your future to strengthen job seeking skills. And then we have also produced a few videos. Those are real concrete examples of people who have moved to the other side of the border, I either work, study, or live. And what is the time if I have still, still some time? Yeah. Good. Yes. Then I can show you one of one of those videos we have produced. An example of a family, a Finnish family, who moved into Kiruna. And uh, through these videos, we hope that uh, people people can see and get some ideas at why shouldn't I to do the same. Text thing is in Swedish, so can you hear? Yeah, I hear. 
Peter Sini, hoia jopare et ore ikiruna, on pöttel jare. Olin kavereiden tykönä Uumaessa viettämässä juhannusta ja siinä yhtäkkiä mietin vasta, että se kiva osata puhua ruotsia. Kouluaikoina en ollut sitä oikein oppinut, koska kiinnostusta ja ei ollut ja ajattelin, että sitä sieltä kumminkaan en tule tarvimaan tulevaisuudessa. No siitä se ajatus sitten lähti ja Ihisalle tosiaankin sanoi, että pitäisiköhän meidän muuttaa ruotia ja siellä oppisi sitten kielen. Ja Iida nyt katsoi mua vähän öljänä ja sanoi, että no kyllä se vaan passaa, mutta hommat kanssa sitten työpaikan siellä. Eli meillä oli silloin parivuotias lapsi ja kummallakin oli työpaikat Oulussa, vastaremontettu koti ja me oli raskaana. Ja tämä Timin ajatus tuntui ensin vähän hullulta, mutta ei miltään mahdottomalta ajatukselta. Ja kuitenkin elämä vieraalla paikkakunnalla ilman tukiverkkoja mietitytti, mutta lähin mukaan. Siinä Iida avustuksella alkoi lähettelemaan ympäri ruottia työhakemuksia ja yksi kaksi puhelin soi ja sieltä pyydettiin sitten Kiirunan työhaastattelu. Me lähdin Timin mukaan tulviksi ja Timi olisi saanut sen työpaikan. Mutta me sanoin sille Timin työnantajalle, että en muuta, jos en saa synnyttää Suomessa ja jos en saa suomalaista äitiystävää. No joku kuuli sen toiveen, koska Iidan eessä oli muutaman minuutin päästä se äitiystävä. Ja sen perheen kanssa vietettiin paljon kiirunassa aikaa ja saatiin kyllä niin paljon uusia ystäviä muitakin. No, Puolisoni kannattaa ottaa selvää, kumman maan sosiaaliturvan piiriin kuuluu. Mulle tuli yllätyksenä se, että kun lapsi, nuori lapsi oli 9 kuukautta, niin ei enää saanutkaan mistään mitään tukea. Mutta asia ratkesi kuitenkin hyvin, kun minäkin sain sitten kiirunassa osa-aikaisen työn. Ruotsissa on nämä tuet, äitiyslomat, vanhempainvapaat joustavampia kuin Suomessa. No, työantajan positiivisuus ja auttamishalu. Työantaja järjesti meille asunnon ja auttopäiväkotipaikan saamisessa. Ruotsissa lapsiperhe otettiin hyvin huomioon. Esimerkiksi työpaikalla joustettiin työajoista tarpeen vaatiessa. Mutta otettiin heti mukaan työjengiä ja kannustettiin oppiin kieltä. Mulle puhuttiin vain ruotsia. Minun mielestä elämä oli Ruotsissa lapsiystävällisempää ja lepposampaa. Perheelämän ja työelämän yhdistäminen sujuu myös tosi hyvin. Ja se, että Ruotsissa lapsia kasvatetaan enemmän kehujen ja kannustuksen kautta. Rohkeasti ja ennakkoluulottomasti vaan työhakemuksia tekemään. Kielen opit kyllä varmasti sitten käytännössä, niin oppin minäkin ja uskallisin. Ja lopuksi tähän voisi sanoa pohjoisruottalaisen tyyliin, että ne löysä se. Joo. Have you any questions? We have Ansvarga här. Ansvarga här. Joo, joo, kiitos paljon. Eikö okay. se niin, että kyllä se löysää se? Joo, joo. joo ei se ole niin uuka, kyllä se löysää se. Joo, i början av projektet, både Lena och jag har lite svårigheter med svenska, men rostika skillna, how do you say, skills has been a little bit rising up. Yeah, that's good. That's terrific. Yeah. Uh, thanks a lot to you too, yeah. and I think this is also a really important project, because I, I think that we, in this part of, of northern uh, regions, Finland and Sweden, we are taking a little bit for granted that we are moving easily around, e especially uh, those of, of us who has been or are living, or uh, is living uh, next to the border. But still there, there are some barriers, so I would really be curious to hear something about the report that you did on the, the barriers for moving from the, the uh, one country to the another. Yes. Uh, did you have some a uh, short findings? Yes, I, I can say that they found uh, six main detective obstacles in yeah. the report. And I have listed because I can know those by my heart. <laughs> and also <laughs> they have two main recommendations um, how to how to diminish these obstacles. Mm. And those are 
facilitate job seeking and labor employment across the borders. There are several of uh, suggestions how to make that, mm. like spreading more information about cross border work opportunities, interlinking job search in website in Finland and Sweden, pu publishing job advertisement in English, telling about work opportunities in the neighboring country in local newspapers, organizing more local recruitment fairs, marketing also local community when recruiting new people, improving skills in neighboring languages and making them attractive. Mm. The second recommendation was increased cross-border cooperation, like arranging regularly for the authorities to meet each other locally would be reduce practical problems. Harmonizing the validation of vocational qualifications would attract and make it easier for job seekers to find job work across the borders. Finland and Sweden should agree on a joint crisis stra strategy in order to avoid the problems that arose on the border during the corona pandemic. Addressing the and removing specific border obstacles, highlighting the work that you would believe NUT has done in providing cross-border vocational education as best practice example. Mm. And uh, as we all know this world, what this world is now carrying on, so this uh, Arpetta Tilsammas has the importance of Arpetta Tilsammas mm. cross border has arisen. And, and these six, if you want to hear it, if I still have time, I could... No, Time is running out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I st no, I begin. <laughs> but you can find. Yes, sir. Great. Yes. Yes, I think so too. Thank you. So now, for the next 15 minutes, we will hear something about the All Bats project that has been going on approximately from January 2020 and will end during the autumn 2023. And this is a European funded project contributing to electrification of transport and the green energy in Europe by designing some blueprints for competence in battery and mobility sector. So we have Anders Norberg, and he's working on with his headset now, and now he's having the microphone put it on Can right on? now. Yeah. Right. Yes. Please. I can How thank about you. Orbats, Anders? Yes. I will keep track of my time here. Yeah. Okay. So, I th thank you. Uh, uh, this is. Yeah. Uh, uh, are you wrong? Oh, okay. Yeah, there is where is the, the here is the the, the, the remote. Yes, uh, I'm. Uh, I'm working for, uh, for the municipality of Schleftio and has has been working with the education development most of my life, uh, first as a teacher and, uh, and a school leader and then as an educational strategist uh, at uh, Campus Schleftio and a, a researcher and s s so on. And uh, I will tell you about this a European level project. Where do we have? Yes. Oops. Y yes. The, uh, Albats is a part of the European Skills Agenda 2015 on developing sectoral cooperation on skills, which is w one of the actions uh, there. From 2020 also uh, a part of, uh, of the Pact for Skills initiative. Th these are quite important, I'll t tell you a little more later. Albats is a so-called European blueprint for sectoral cooperation. The, the, uh, the commission it identifies each year f four or five important branches of industry or business that needs, needs to, to, uh, to update the, their educational structures and identify new emerging ro job roles and things 
I like that. Uh, and this ha has to be described and worked together on etc. On the other side, the, the European Union and Commission does not have a say in the national educational systems. This is for for inspiration, for benchmarking, for so-called soft policy, but education is, is, of course, extremely important for, for forming development. ALBAT stands for Alliance for Batteries, Technology, Training and Skills, and it's a, a blueprint is a kind of combination of best practice and action plan for, for a, a sector here. And uh, ALBAT is sti still the uh, the uh, only b b blueprint that that is coordinated fr from Sweden and so on. And th th this is the uh, symbol for the new skills agenda f uh, from 2015 and the updated from f f from 2020, where the so-called pact for skills is the big action and uh, we are a part of that as well now. But I'll tell you more later. Here you see our t t 20 partners f from 11 countries uh, th th that are working together in this project about uh, batteries and electromobility education. We are f four universities, five uh, vocational education providers, s some regions and cities and research institutes and companies and uh, Northvolt is one of our partners and so on. We are uh, rather well spread over Europe, but uh, we don't have partners from Germany, fr France and Spain. And uh, this is quite common because uh, they are big economies, they make their own projects and so on. But, but uh, we have ne ne networked uh, very well in, in, in Germany and France and have many uh, collaboration contacts there. Th this is our uh, steering group and, and so on. And uh, we have a, a rather c conventional work package structure. I'll tell you more about that here later. Uh, in short, uh, there are t two big questions we are working with. First, what's really going on? And th this is really important because uh, educational providers as universities and vocational school often design education out of what they already know themselves and uh, what teachers they have and, uh, and s s so on. But uh, in these projects, I I it's, it's the meaning of, of making very deep studies of how things are working, where they are going and uh, what's needed. And it's not enough to just ask companies either. They, it has to be a kind of catalyst a be a between in some way. And, and we call that sectoral intelligence. We have three work packages working with that, making a, a, lot, a lot of reports uh, every year here in our four-year project. Uh, well, the, the second big question is then, how can we address the identified education and training needs from this, of what is going on? And this what is going on question, uh, the content of that I will come to. And, uh, Basically, uh, we, we s s study I I in detail the intelligence in stationary and industrial battery applications and in mobile battery applications in work package three. Then we d draw, draw conclusions and make analysis I in the sectoral intelligence work package and we deliver the, the, that to our training and education section. In reality, uh, we work s s synchronously and, and together as, as well and so on. And uh, we, we work, of course, uh, with the whole uh, value chain in both uh, sectoral intelligence and training, but we focus I in education and training on, on the, uh, the, the, the vocational and technician level of, of education because uh, there are many other European research projects uh, that uh, work with master and PhD education and so on. So we, we don't, I uh, don't have to have to do that. Yes, uh, this is uh, just a slide about s some recent uh, m uh, maps uh, over the b battery value ch chain and different parts of it I in 
in Europe. We have been making these kind of maps, but, but it came now uh, recently f f from uh, from a in our s s sectoral skills s s strategy uh, uh, or, or our s s sectoral intelligence work, we uh, we have a big stakeholder dat database about uh, 400 organizations uh, that we c commu c communicate with. We identify technologies, s s stakeholders, emerging t technologies, uh, global context, and, new or and above all, new job roles and skills, and so on. And uh, we make one round of desk research surveys and expert workshop every year and form that into reports. We have about 20 rather mas massive and specialized reports on our uh, websites. And uh, these are often rather long, but we have sh short, short, more popular versions of each as, as well, highlight uh, versions, because uh, they can be t tough t t to read. And, and what sectoral intelligence then, uh, th then delivers is, is a report ultimately about new skills needs, emerging job roles, new occupations, education and training needs, and above all different gaps in education offerings and so on a and uh, the, uh, we have our first version of a sectoral skills strategies for the bat battery and electromobility sector uh, online as well uh, and an updated version of that uh, document will come come soon and uh, then then in in education and training uh, we have uh, have a, a little different work we uh, did not work very much from the beginning other one uh, otherwise than checking what was already there and and uh, this with uh, european structures for education development etc but uh, we are now uh, working with a, a new educational material that's uh, missing and so, uh, and so on with Trained, uh, trained or trainer solutions, writing learning objectives, writing examples for, for course plans, and, and uh, uh, networking in the different ways. We have a, p a pedagogical uh, edge also. We work with so-called uh, adaptive learning courses that form uh, after the user. So if you know s something already, you shouldn't have to learn that. If you have gaps in, in your learning, that will be identified, etc. We have a s specialized Irish partner, it, I realize it, that uh, works with, with this. And I will soon here in Schleft, you ha have a first uh, European t teacher forum for, for, uh, for, for c coming t t teachers in the battery sector about Ten different countries will s send th a three or four teachers e each, and will uh, discuss about this uh, very much with the help of of uh, books, which uh, education development we have s supported this uh, this automation operator, et etc. So the, the t first teacher forum will come. The second teacher forum will be uh, about uh, uh, electric vehicles uh, uh, and electromobility and. S so on, and th 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 that will come in Czech Republic in uh, f February, and uh, we'll go on like this. Let's see. Yes. Uh, so, and uh, we are th then expected to, to implement our results in the national educational systems. Uh, that's already on uh, ongoing, and we s are all the t t times seeking contacts. Uh, around the new battery gigafactories, uh, for example, uh, that, that's uh, establishing uh, and, and uh, mo uh, more and more companies and regions uh, are, are contacting us as, as well. B but uh, we also need some way for our results to go on after the finished project. And uh, we have b been active I in the so-called pact for skills. I, I will soon soon be there. Uh, we are uh, expected uh, in this project uh, t t t t to uh, work uh, along the um, uh, European frameworks uh, and, and European languages of education for uh, countries being uh, able to, to, to um, compare one uh, with 
uh, one another, etc. We are working especially much with, with the SS school, the, 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 the European uh, the, uh, the database of, of occupation, as we want some new occupations and new skills to, to be listed there, etc. Yeah, here. We're, we're also networking with a, a lot of other European wide initiatives that uh, work with education in one way or the other and I want to uh, t talk about uh, every one of these but among the, the, these uh, we are the only one that focuses on, on uh, uh, adult and vocational level of, of, of education etc. We have a kind of coordination group where all these projects and initiatives meet as well and so on. Uh, this with pact for skills. Uh, well, check up this. Uh, this is uh, the new European uh, initiative uh, about uh, co uh, continuing ed education in, in all sectors. And the organizations are invited to, to, to sign the pact for skills sh 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 charter d document. Uh, and m m m most, uh, 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 oops, yes, well, uh, we have uh, formed uh, the Automotive S Skills Alliance. That's the, the, that was uh, the, the first and still the biggest industrial ecosystem uh, within the Pact for Skills. We have uh, about uh, 90 partners there, and uh, we are coordinating a, a, a better section in this. And uh, I'll soon be ready. We have the uh, conference in Stuttgart next week, the first conference of, of this automotive skills alliance that we have formed at etc and uh, thank you and check I check in our website we have a lot of resources there and about 15 expert workshops that are recorded on, on different specialized themes and communicate with us please thank you thank you Anders excellent A lot of uh, knowledge to to uh, just click into at that web page and in the Albes as well. Uh, looking forward to see the uh, final conf conference also of this Albes uh, project. And since uh, Schleppe municipality is one of the in the management team, maybe we we will see it here in Schleppe as well. That would be good. So we can connect it to. Yes, okay. yes, of course. Sorry. So we can connect it also to the the all the great in initiatives that we have heard yeah. here today. Yeah. Yes. Very so good. thank you. And uh, now we're moving on to the last last thing here. And not not really the last, n nearly the last. So I'm welcoming uh, Sanni Pietola. Yeah, Simon. Dalberg up to the uh -huh. Jaha, Dahlgren. Did I say wrong name? Na name. Okay, things happens when you're in <laughs> alive. When you're alive soon I will not be alive, I guess. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, uh, so you've been working with within this better video project, and uh, let's see. You are going to ni ska prata både svenska och finska. Visst var det så? Ja. Och du vill prata finska. Jag skulle prova finska, men det 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 blev inte så. Då kommer du att få heta fel namn igen, tror jag, för att. För mycket yes. Varsågod, vill ni ja. köra själv? <coughs> Vi, ja. Eller Vi bara med. Nej. Ja, jag, kliver, jag kliver av och så får ja, ni gör köra. Det. Gör det. Ja, bra, eh, eh, ja, vi ska prova att prata både svenska och finska. Och det, är, det är bara för att eh, vi vill undvika missförstånd. Visst är det så? Ja, ja det stämmer. Uh, innehållet ska vara ungefär likadant. Eli me yritetään nyt puhua sitten tämä esitys niin ruotsiksi ja suomeksi. Joo. Ja sisältö suurin piirtein sama. Ska vi se sen? 
<laughs> Vart det där? Nej, det är ju fel. Det är fel. Det är fel om du vänder på det. Så där. Så. Det är lite jobbigt att hon vet vad jag säger, men jag vet inte vad hon säger. Det är lite jobbigt. Okej. Okay. Vi har skrivit ner några punkter och jag tar det på svenska och du tar det på finska. Och förhoppningsvis så är det samma. Okej. Okay. Det vi har sett under arbetet är att utbildningssystemen skiljer sig åt mellan länder. Och det är alltid så mellan olika länder. Och då är det viktigt att synliggöra det tidigt i projektet, för annars pratar man om olika saker. Man, 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 vi måste undvika missförstånd helt enkelt. Eli hankkeen kokemuksia, ja kuten aikaisemmin tosiaan oli puhetta, niin koulutusjärjestelmät eroaa hieman toisista ja näin myös Suomessa ja Ruotsissa. Ja jotta me voitaisiin välttää, välttää tuota väärinkäsityksiä, niin on hyvin tärkeää, että hankkeessa puhutaan nämä asiat ääneen heti alussa. Var det ungefär samma? Okej. Okay. Jag bara, bara kollar. Sen har vi också sett att på vår nivå, alltså EQF4, gymnasial nivå i Sverige, då har vi stora möjligheter att samarbeta. En stor utmaning kan ju vara språket. Så att om man tänker efter den svenska gymnasieskolan eller vuxenutbildningen i Sverige, då kan man ju söka en, en vidareutbildning på, på yrkeshögskolan, både i Sverige och Finland. Jo, eli Simon kertoi, että, että tosiaan ollaan löydetty sellainen ratkaisu, että tällä EQF4-tasolla me voidaan tehdä yhteistyötä. Ja, ja tosiaan... Ää, Tämä EQF 4-taso on täällä, puhutaan tosiaan, se on gymnasiiskuulon ja sitten tämä vuksen utbildning. Ja meillä se on, me puhutaan niin osa edustaa ammattikoulua. Ja mietitään ratkaisua just sitä, että et, et Suomesta voi hakea jatko-opintoihin Ruotsiin, ammattikorkeakouluun tai toisinpäin. Okei. Okay. <laughs> ungefär. Ungefär sama, okei. Okay. Det vi också har märkt av under projektets gång att, att det är lätt, att det finns en brist på förståelse hur utbildningssystemen ser ut. Och det handlar om olika nivåer, alltså nivåerna i, i utbildningssystemet. Det är oerhört lätt att man halkar uppåt i systemet. Jag måste poängtera att det, hela utbildningssystemet behövs, men det är jättelätt att man halkar uppåt. Så man tror att man behöver en högre utbildningsnivå än vad det är arbetsuppgifter som egentligen ska genomföras. Men hela utbildningssystemet behövs, och det måste vi komma ihåg. Vi har hankkeessa puhuttu näistä koulutusjärjestelmien eroista ja koulutusasteista maissa. Ja tosiaan on tärkeää tiedostaa se, että, että tuota, helposti niin korkeammalla tasolla jos ajatellaan poliitikkoja ja organisaatioita, niin ajatellaan, että tarvitaan korkeampaa koulutusta, entä sitten oikeasti ne työtehtävät vaatii. Ja esimerkkinä voi kertoa sen, että, että tosiaan alkuun ajateltiin, että, että Nordvoltillekin tarvitaan... Tar okay. tar tarvitaan hirveitä määriä insinöörejä, kun kuitenkin oikeasti tarvitaan niitä työntekijöitä, eli ammattikoulun käy käyneitä. Du får berätta sen vilket exempel du gav. Nordvolt. Okay. Att de, uh, jag sa att uh, de tänkte först att de behöver uh, jättemycket ingenjörer. Mm. Man, men det är ju inte så att man behöver ju, uh, arbetare som har mm. gått gymnasieskolan mm. eller yrkeskolan i Finland. Mm. Eh, vad tar vi med oss av de här, det här projektet då? Ja, eh, det vi tar med oss, eller det jag tar med mig, det är att det är jättebra med erfarenhetsutbyte. Att få träffa andra utbildningsanordnare och fram från andra länder är oerhört intressant. Så vi har lärt oss en hel del under de samtal som har förts och under de studiebesök som vi har haft. Ni har varit och besökt oss tidigare. Ja, man lär sig alltid något nytt, även om språket är lite jobbigt. Jag håller med dig. Bra. <laughs> 
voin allekirjoittaa sen, mitä Simon sanoi, eli oikeastaan sama, että se, mitä me ollaan niin kuin, saatu mukaan me tästä hankkeesta, on se, että on ollut tosi, tosi niin kuin, tärkeää keskustelua hanketoimijoiden kanssa siitä, että ensinnäkin kokemusten vaihtoa koulutuksiin liittyen ää, ja koko kenttään liittyen ää, sekä meidän niin kuin, vaikka hankepalavereissa, mutta sitten vierailulla, mikä me tänne tehtiin viime keväänä. Ja tosiaan ollaan opittu toisistamme ja ehkä vähän, vähän kielestäkin, vaikka se on vaikea. Takan pohulla Sen där vi också har, har jobbat mycket med det är att den här batteribranschen är ny och det finns inga färdiga utbildningspaket på någon, på någon nivå egentligen. Och det vi har jobbat med är att ta fram utbildningar på gymnasial nivå och på yrkeshögskolenivå. Och där har ju projektet inneburit att vi har kunnat, för vi har fått, vi har kunnat göra det med, med stöd av det här projektet. Det är oerhört viktigt att, vi, att projekt beviljas som kan hjälpa oss i det i det jobb vi måste göra helt enkelt. Joo, nyt täytyy ihan miettiä, että mitä, mitä tässä puhuttiin. Eli se, että akkuteollisuus on uusi teollisuuden ala, ja mitä valmiita koulutus, koulutuspaketteja ei ole ollut. Ja on ollut tosi tärkeää, että nyt tämän niin kuin hankkeen aikana on pystytty lähteä kehittämään sitä koulutusta. Ja se on sama sekä Ruotsissa että meillä Suomessa osalla. Då har vi en fråga, vad blir nästa steg? Det är du som har skrivit frågorna, va? Visst var det så? Mm. Så då sitter det alldeles tyst. Eh, vad blir nästa steg? Nej, men för oss, eh, vi har ju gått från att, att eh, göra två, två olika eller två, tre olika utbildningar på gymnasial nivå. Och det vi nu gör är att vi ger dem på engelska. Alltså vi, vi har ju, vuxenutbildningar har väl aldrig gjort y- yrkesutbildningar på engelska förut. Men vi har två utbildningar nu som till största delen går på engelska och det är för att det är där vi har målgruppen just nu. Så vi hoppas kunna ge fler utbildningar på engelska för att kunna bli mer internationell. Och då menar jag också att fin- Finland kan komma in i den, i den bilden. No niin, mä yritän tiivistää lyhyesti. Eli tuota, mitä me, mikä on seuraava askel, niin, niin yritetään tosiaan antaa enemmän englanninkielisiä koulutuksia tälläkin hetkellä. Selleteossa menee englanninkielisiä koulutuksia. Mä voin sanoa samaan, samaan tuota osa on puolelta, eli toivotaan, että meilläkin saadaan englanninkielisiä koulutuksia ja pystytään sen kauttakin tekemään lisää yhteistyötä. Ja. 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 Och då har vi en sista sak som vi, vi från Skellefteå vill lägga in, det är att vi vill ju marknadsföra våra utbildningar i Finland. Och öppna upp dem för, för Finland och kunna rekrytera elever därifrån. Och det tror jag kommer att vara till stor nytta även för Finland. För de kan jobba ett tag i Sverige, sen fara tillbaka till Finland och hjälpa till att bygga upp branschen där också. Så det vill vi göra. Simon haluar markkinoida Skellefteon koulutuksia Suomeen opiskelijoille. Ja toivoo, että suomalaiset opiskelijat tulevat tänne opiskelemaan ja ehkä tekemään töitäkin ja muuttavat sitten takaisin sen tietotaidon kanssa Suomeen. Odo har vi ett lättare om intent. Vi har det också. Kiitos paljon Simon ja Sanni. Sanni ja Simon. It is like a good couple. <laughs> Or a bad, good, good, just a good couple, not a bad, bad one. Bad a good couple. One. Yeah, that's, you. yeah, that might be me. Uh, excellent, and it worked very well with uh, the languages as well. So, and therefore the, we are already in the end of the conference. So I would like Sara Wards Edvard to step up here, and uh, you have some summarizing, conclusion, reflections. Please. Here. Yes, and more like some reflections. We have also this uh, letter of intent. Letter of intent. Yes, yeah. go ahead. So we've heard uh, Jarko and Christian from the national level, and a lot of stakeholders from various organizations and levels. And I honestly think this conference would have been more fun if we would disagree. My <laughs> opinion is that we do agree about a lot of things, so I'm happy that we do agree, and that we have similar results. So if there are many voices saying the same thing, I think that is a strength, and that will take us 
accelerate the development. So I'd like to thank everyone for coming today. And we're going to sign this letter of intent. And the information in the letter of intent you can find on our web page. So this paper has been going across the border a couple of times. It's going to go back. So Simon, please come and sign. And Osao has already signed in Finland. signing is going on, I would like to thank Aurora for being our moderator for today and doing a great job. Thank you so much. Yes. Yeah, I, I just said that I want like, from my point of view, uh, thank you all for coming this day. And uh, it's have been an amazing day. And I think that everything we have been talking about more or less comes down to the need of communication and the need of collaboration. And we are heading the way forward to be even better to achieve our goals, to be spot on in the era of the green transition in both Finland and Sweden, and mainly in the northern part of these regions as well. So thank you a lot for today. <laughs> yeah. Yes, now it's nu är det fika. Nu är det fika. Jag tror jag längtade lite efter fika.